Right. The next requirement on your part, dear friends, the most important key thing that we are going to discuss here in this program now is I'm going to give you a workbook. Keep this workbook along with you. Wait until such time I request you to open it. Right. Is my brief clear? Yes. Okay. Keep the workbook along with you. Wait until such time I request you to open it. How did I communicate this message? Positively or negatively? Keep it along with you. Wait until such time I request you to open it. How did I communicate? Come on. Positively. Okay. Now I count all in all 18 years of experience as a trainer. Now what do I do? Every day I make a learning. When I stand here, there are so many things that I see you don't see. You know, my childhood, I had different likings. I wanted to be a singer. I wanted to be an actor. But would your parents ever allow you to do that? Never. From my childhood onwards, my parents kept on telling, telling me only about two types of professions. Only about two types of professions. What were they? Try, work hard, study, either to be a doctor or an engineer. If possible, both. Engineering, doctor. Okay. Right. Now, what did I realize in my life? I realized that if I really want to do those two professions, I have to study science. Now, don't ask me why. Whatever the reason it could be, I hated this stupid subject, so-called science. For me, it was stupid. So my parents, they told me, you have to study. Then once they asked me, what do you like to study? I said, commerce. Then they told, commerce is a subject matter which is done by all kind of idiots. Who cannot study science, mess. they are the ones who are going to do that. And he said, you are the eldest of the family, and you must set an example to the others. Therefore, that you got to do science. So they forced me to do science. So with the greatest difficulty, my dear friends, I managed to get to up to O-levels. Then here we are now, I'm getting to A-level science stream. What is it that I'm going to study? Chemistry. There's a subject matter called chemistry. You trust me, I never understood this particular subject matter. And to be very frank, I didn't want to understand this subject matter either. What do they say? They say, two hydrogen with one oxygen, it makes water, it seems. So why do I care, isn't it? Let it happen. <laughs> As and when I feel thirsty, if there is water for me to drink, and when you open up the shower, if there is a water flow, that's what you need, no? So they said, no, 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 you got to study. So they were government servants. What did they do? They got down three lecturers to teach this subject matter by paying 15 rupees an hour. I'm talking about 35 years ago. So 15 rupees an hour is a lot of money. But still for all my dear friends, no, I never understood this subject matter. And A-level chemistry I did three times. That's the maximum number of times they love to do my levels. <laughs> but each time when I went for the chemistry paper, something which I found was the time period was too much for me to answer the paper. Three hours was too much. So what did I do now? First half an hour, I wrote what I knew. Thereafter, I copied the question paper to the answer script. So now what happened now? For copying the question paper to the answer script, what do you get? You know, the grade that you are getting. So with that, can you go to the university? No. Then they said, you better do whatever the things that you want. So thereafter, what happened? With the greatest difficulty, found a job for 600 rupees, studied English language, got myself registered with institutes, institutes outside Sri Lanka, UK, uh, and in Australia, and managed to get the qualification, whatever I have here today. So point I'm trying to drive here is we were never given an opportunity to excel in what we really like. Not that they didn't love us, that they didn't love us, they loved us too much. But what is needed today is you've got to identify the talent of a person and get him to excel along with that talent. And once they achieve greatness with that talent, we must say, hey, we are proud of you. That is what is needed. So probably could be after 30 years of my career, that's how I became a trainer subsequently. So I liked acting, as I, as I told you. When I was about 12 years old, you know this famous actor, Dr. Jalat Manuel we invited him today, but he had some shooting and he's unable to make it. I went for a drama class of his on a Saturday, one day workshop. Now had I told my parents it was a drama class, they wouldn't have ever allowed. I, I told them that it's a chemistry class, extra. <laughs> so I went. 
And something he said, this learning came to me about, could be 35 or 40 years ago. This learning that came to me then, still I am using and it's so useful. He said a wonderful thing in this drama class. He said, whenever you are communicating things to another, there are ways of saying that. And for an example, still I could remember this, he just took three words. Heta gedrayanava. Heta gedrayanava. And he said these words, the way how you can use them. He said, Heta Gedareyanava. You can say that. Heta Gedareyanava. Just in a casual, you can say it. Heta Gedareyanava. You are thinking, what are you going to do tomorrow? And then you are saying that. Heta Gedareyanava. Not day after tomorrow. Oh, no, no, Heta. Heta Gedareyanava. A question you are asking. So see, these three words, the way how you can use it. Now then after that, what happened? We went to our speech crafting, Toastmasters. What do they teach there? Whenever you are communicating something to another, there are three things that matters most. What you say, how you say, and the way how you say so. Your body language. So what you say, they say, matters only 7%. How you say so is 38%, and your body language is 55%. So most in this program, you would see the last one in communicating messages. So what you say is just 7%. How you say so is 38%. And your body language is 55%. Now here where this person, this drama master happened to say this. But research was carried out subsequently throughout the globe. When you are communicating the power of a message, 7% what you say, 38% how you say, 55% of your body language. So today we are practicing that. Even whatever the profession we are doing in customer service too, it matters a lot. What you say is only 7%, how you say so is 38%, and your body language is 55%. Okay, so what happened? Now you are with an actor. Those days getting close to an actor was a big thing because we never had TV and only two radio channels. So entire day I was with him on this workshop, drama workshop. And after that I walked up to him and then said, Sir, Mage photographic sign cannot. He wrote a wonderful thing and still I have it. And you are going to see it. In 1978. So I found as a trainer, whenever I get onto a stage, there are so many things that I see, what you don't see. So coming back to my message, what did I say? I told you, now you are getting a workbook, keep it along with you, wait until such time I request you to open it. Now you know previously what I used to say is, I used to give the workbook and say, don't open it. The moment I say don't, what do people do? <laughs> what do they do? Then? They open it, <laughs> simple as that. They open it. Moment you say don't, that is the exact thing people tend to do. Why is that? When you say don't, that is the exact thing people tend to do. Can any one of you tell me why is that? Oh, you want to test and see? Curiosity, inquisity, anxiety, worry, fear. And you want to open it and see. When I was running a training program recently in Maldives, a very interesting thing happened. I happen to mention this. I was training the largest seaplane company in the world, Transmolian Airways, in Maldives. And there was a, just a, could be a school leaver, a girl who had joined this company, a Muslim girl covered with a shawl. And then I just asked this question. When you say don't, that is the exact thing people tend to do. I asked why. You know, she said a very interesting thing. She said, human nature. That's human nature. And when you critically evaluate those two words, that's very useful for a trainer because what we are discussing in this program is about human behavior and human nature. That's human nature. Because your brain can always picture don't. Let's take a couple of examples. I'm going to tell you at this moment of time, don't think of Adam speak. <laughs> what happened? Oh, you started thinking. Okay, right. Okay, I'm going to tell you, don't think of a blue ocean. <laughs> you started visualizing, isn't it? Waves breaking, ships sailing, and the way how you're walking down the beach. Okay, stop there. Don't think anything beyond that. Okay, right. 
Okay, I'm going to tell you now something like this. Dear friends, don't think of the Great Wall of China. What happened? Great Wall of China. Oh, you start to visualize it. Okay, I'm going to tell you something like this now. Don't think of a pink color elephant. <laughs> By laughing. <laughs> okay, how you started thinking, isn't it? Now, all the other things you had seen in your life. Isn't it? You had seen Adam speak enough and more times, Blue Ocean, um, Great Wall of China, at least a photograph you had seen. Have you all ever seen a pink elephant in your lifetime? Have you all ever seen a pink elephant in your lifetime? No. But here you saw it. Will you agree? That's what happened. Don't is something that you can always picture. My dear friends, so what happened? Those days I used to give the workbook and say, don't open it. Moment I say don't, people start opening. Therefore, I decided whenever I'm communicating something, the most important thing is to communicate things in a positive way. That is the most crucial thing. Communicate things in a positive way. So I gave you this message in a positive way. Right. Now you find we are going to talk about service cultures. Nowhere on the earth a great service culture could be se set without being positive. Nowhere. Nowhere. The most important thing in setting up a service culture is whenever you are being given a task, a challenge, accepting it in a positive way. How well could we do this? And let us somehow or other do it and be adamant in doing it and without being positive no way how you could put a great service culture in place 